Well, William, uh, welcome to the program and uh, somewhat momentous day, I would suggest, for the uh, chair of the uh, meat and wool section of Federated Farmers. Uh, as a sheep and beef farmer, how do, how do you uh, feel about this announcement, which it's going to have exceedingly more impact on sheep and beef than, than dairy? Yeah, I, I'm not sure that a momentous day is the uh, is the right description. Um, it's a... Uh, how do I, how do I feel? Um, I think I, you know, it's probably past frustration. Um, it's a big concern for our rural communities, um, and uh, I just think that there is um, a complete lack of understanding, and uh, and we're missing the opportunity of pricing agricultural emissions. I think that um, our 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 rural communities have really come on board with um, uh, wanting to uh, figure out systems to how they can understand their agricultural missions and, and do their best to ensure that, that, that our farms are not contributing to any further climate change or global, global warming. And um, then to have policy, uh, you know, pushed over the top of you that could just completely decimate your communities is, uh, is pretty, pretty destructive, really. So, yeah, your president, Andrew Hoggard, uh, sees this ripping the guts out of small town New Zealand and putting trees where farms used to be, which, of course, we know is happening already. But uh, do you agree? Yeah, I think that um, the proposals by the government, and I think this is a, what's misunderstood, is uh, what changes the government ha has put in place um, will, as Andrew said, rip the guts out of our rural communities. And I, I think if we start from the information actually in the uh, in the government's proposal document, it states that uh, there would be 21%, with the average methane price that they're predicting, there would be a 21% decrease in sheep and beef production across New Zealand. Now, if you apply that to communities like uh, Gisborne or Wairau, um, that the document also talks about the potential for um, smaller uh, meat processing facilities to be shut down. Well, you know, if this caused the shutting down of AFCO and Wairau, you could kiss Wairau goodbye. That would shut that town. If you're looking um, at Gisborne as another example, um, the number one employer in Gisborne is education. The second biggest employer in Gisborne is the agricultural sector. And the third biggest employer is the um, is uh, the services to the agricultural sector. Gisborne has two dairy farms um, and a large proportion of that economy is based on sheep and beef. You would basically cut Gisborne in half with 21% reduction of sheep and beef um, from those areas. So um, the, the numbers in the document are, are, are pretty ugly. And, um, and the impact on those communities, um, the east coast of New Zealand, central North Island, other areas that, that could happen um, if this proposal continues would um, would would change the face not only of rural New Zealand but but of New Zealand um, and also the numbers talk about cutting billions of dollars of export revenue it talks about our emissions being leaked overseas so where we reduce our production it will just get picked up at other places overseas so there will be no uh, decrease in, in greenhouse gases from agriculture in fact it'll probably increase because they'll be less efficient than us and uh, and so we and we're going to lose a whole lot of jobs. The the whole the whole partnership of Hewaki Kanoa and the spirit it was entered into is just doesn't seem to have been recognised in this document. So how is it that sheep and beef are disadvantaged when the more I suppose more pollution comes out of intensive dairying? Well, first of all, we're talking mostly here about um, biogenic methane methane coming from animals, which is a circular system. It's not like fossil fuel carbon dioxide or fossil fuel methane which is carbon stored in the ground and then emitted into the atmosphere uh, taken out of the ground emitted to the atmosphere it's a circ with biogenic or animal methane it's a circular system so what happens is that uh, the grass grows um, that contains carbon the animals eat the carbon um, they uh, they eat the carbon and then that gets um reconstituted into methane and emitted out the back of the animal. Um, and then the, the methane breaks down to carbon in the atmosphere again and gets eaten again uh, as the grass. So the key factor is the dry matter consumption. So the grass consumption by a, a dairy cow per kilogram is they make about 70 cents a kilogram of, of an, an efficient dairy system. A, a hill country sheep and beef system 
much more extensively run with sequestration and biodiversity might be making 18 cents per kilogram of that feed consumed. So if you set a methane price for every kilogram of, uh, of methane emitted, for a dairy farmer, that might be, say, 8 to 14 cents or 11 cents per kilogram of their dry matter consumed, whereas a sheep uh, per kilogram of methane emitted, which is related to the dry matter consumed, for a sheep and beef farmer that's only earning 18 cents, that impact for, for what they earn is much higher because it's measured on per kilogram of um, feed eaten by those animals. So that's why uh, the intensive systems are much less impacted by this policy, yet the extensive sheep and beef farm with biodiversity and sequestration all around it and all those other good things is significantly impacted because their uh, earnings per kilogram of dry matter eaten are so much lower. So we move on, it's a consultation document, it's a, there's a fight ahead, eh? I wouldn't like to think of it as a fight. What I would like to think of it is a uh, is there is actually a lot of opportunity for our sectors to come together and say, this is about our rural communities, our rural towns, um, New Zealand Inc. And, and there's an opportunity to, to, to really get this right. Um, Obviously, we don't think the government's got it right. Let's uh, let's come back and talk about the key areas that we need to address and act in the best interests of, of New Zealand, our communities and our people, um, and ensure that we address climate change, not just uh, run a political system that's going to be a bit of grandstanding that has massive impact on people. 